Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you've got a big smile on your face. And I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here. Recently, I've been hearing a lot of whispers, a lot of talks around Fibonacci, whether people are uncertain on how to actually use it on a chart. Uh, and some other people may be thinking, is Fibonacci even true? Does it actually apply to these markets? Can you become profitable using Fibonacci? So I decided in today's video to, um, just to go ahead and speak about my experience using Fibonacci. Also a very quick and basic training in regards to how to actually apply Fibonacci to your charts and uh, I'm really going to be speaking about um, if, if you know, it's it's true if you can make money from Fibonacci and um, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. What is Fibonacci or who is Fibonacci? Fibonacci is an Italian mathematician who came up with a series of numbers. You might have heard of a uh, Fibonacci sequence where this series of numbers starts from zero and one and every number after that is an addition of the two previous numbers. So zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two, three, five, three, five, eight, so on and so forth. This is a never ending series of numbers. And what's very interesting about it is that as the numbers go on further and further, when you divide one number by the previous one, the ratio gets closer and closer to 1.618, which is where that 6 to 1.8 golden ratio comes from. For example, 987 divided by 610, 1.618. And feel free to do this in your own time. To be honest with you, like this, this maths behind it or this history behind it, 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 it doesn't really matter. You know, it's not that this is necessary to actual trading, um, but it is sometimes good to know about it. Um, either way, do this in your own time, divide one number by the previous one, and then you'll see that that gets closer and closer to 1.618, which is where that 61.8% golden ratio comes from. In terms of Fibonacci in nature, that's another thing that um, um, I, I used to uh, speak about a lot, and a lot of people right now are speaking about as well, where you might have seen, for example, the Fibonacci spiral um, be you know, visible in nature. Again, I, I recommend everyone to, in your own time, go and do these searches on your own, watch a few, you know, maybe um, video, quick videos, or maybe see a couple pictures uh, on what I mean when I say Fibonacci in nature. But generally speaking, this Fibonacci number, Fibonacci sequence, Fibonacci spiral, you can see it everywhere around you. Now, here's the thing. Just because you can see it all around you in nature, does that necessarily mean it's going to be applicable to the charts, to the financial markets? Does that mean that Fibonacci is going to be a tool for everyone to use, for them to become profitable? Now, that's a bit questionable at the end of the day. We have to, we have to be realistic. Um, that it, it, it may not apply to the financial markets, but we'll speak about that a little bit more later on. Generally, what does Fibonacci even speak about? Fibonacci speaks about discounted or premium price levels. As a general example, when you look at how Fibonacci works, it's as if you want to buy a hat and the price of hat has gone up. You wait for the discount on that price of the hat before you look to buy it. That's one way of looking at it. Or for example, if you wanna go ahead and sell something, the price of that item has dropped, you preferably would wanna wait for the price of that item to increase before you sell it, since you'll have more profits in a way. So that is generally how Fibonacci works. It simply t uh, speaks about discounted or premium price levels, meaning it does not help you with finding if you should buy. These are two pictures that I would recommend. Take a screenshot of this for yourself. But Fibonacci is not a tool to be used to tell you if you should buy or sell. You use Fibonacci after knowing your directional bias. So you only use Fibonacci for potential entries. So that's at least how you're meant to use it, right? Um, so if you generally have a bullish trend, low, high, higher, low, higher high, this market is generally going up. Now you kind of know your directional bias is meant to be on the bullish side of the market. So you would want to somehow buy this to the upside, right? So Fibonacci will help you with certain discounted price levels to wait for the price to retrace before you look to buy it. Now, uh, different people use Fibonacci very different. Some people might use it based on 50 to 61.8 pocket, some from 61.8 to 71%. 
some from 71 to 786, some from 786 to 886, some might only buy based on 38.2 um, level. And this is exactly where things get extremely confusing when it comes to Fibonacci because there's many, many, many different ways to use it, many different ways to find your entry based on it, whereas there's no clear instruction as to exactly which one to use. Um, the other screenshot for this would be here. So this is for the sell side of the uh, market. So the market is in a bearish trend. You've got high, low, lower high, lower low. So you know you want to be on the sell side. Um, you will simply be waiting for a retracement before you sell it back down and you're hoping to use Fibonacci to help you with certain entry areas. Um, now, if you have a certain strategy that works for you, um, especially using Fibonacci, then continue to use it. I don't want anyone to be using this video or the information in this video to think to themselves that the way that they are trading maybe is wrong, especially if it's a way that works for you. So don't be offended in what I'm about to say about Fibonacci. Um, just know that uh, this is my own perspective, my own belief, which could be very different. Other people can have many different ways to use Fibonacci that works excellently for them. Um, and so continue to use it if that is you. Now, before I speak a little bit more about Fibonacci in general, let me first talk about my experience generally with Fibonacci. So the first times I started to use Fibonacci was probably early or mid 2018. And those were the times that we would enter based on that 61.8% um, kind of pocket, I'm going to say. Um, so we were waiting for 61.8 a little bit later on, probably towards end of 2018. And uh, we started to use the pocket between 61.8 to 71%. And this general region, we were waiting for the market to exactly tap off these regions and reverse. Then we'd have our stop losses above slash near 88.6. That's where we would be using for our risk and then take profits at that minus 27 um, kind of extension. Now, as time started to kind of go by, little by little, we started to realize that the market was reversing at 786 a little bit more. And this is especially around the times that we started to look into smart money and Wyckoff. Uh, at the end of the day, we haven't been trading these concepts from day one. Um, we had to change the style of our trading um, to be able to adapt to some new information. We're always a student, right? So these were the times that we were using 786 and 886 a little bit more for our entries, or at least the pocket got extended from 71% all the way to about 88.6. And that was the sweet spots that we would like to enter because the assumption was a lot of retail stop losses will be around 786 and 886. This is where a lot of people and us included in the past were having our stop losses. So that made that area a very good area for manipulation. So we expected the market to come into that region and tap off that, let's say in this case, supply zone before dropping further. Now, my current understanding on Fibonacci is, is this. Let me let me um, speak about AUD and ZD on the four hour time frame. So the numbers that I have written over here, all of these are retracements of the previous swings. So 88.6, meaning what? From that high to this low, this Fibonacci reversed to that 88.6 level. So hence, that's an 88.6 retracement. From that high to this low, the market reversed at that 61.8 region. So on and so forth, right? These are all just retracements of the previous swing. Swing and a retracement. Another swing and a retracement. Swing and a retracement. Swing, retracement. Um, over here, I counted these small swings and retracements, every single one of these. And then this one, this is our swing and this is our retracement. So as if we've kind of changed in the momentum of the market, let's say. Now, as you can clearly see, 71% um, seems to be a little bit more accurate, I'm going to say, than other levels. That, that in this specific case is a level that the market has rejected more than the previous levels, more than 61.8 golden ratio, more than the 88.6 or even 78.6. But in multiple occasions, we did have other levels that were rejected as well. In a lot of different examples that you will look at in the market, even within the same trend, you will be able to find that many different levels are getting mitigated. For example, if I'm counting this trend coming up, let's say from this low to that high, this didn't even reach that 38.2. The next swing from this low to that high, to this high over there, this rejected that 78.6. Then the next swing would be from that low to this high over here, extending that 61.8. So there's no 
proper consistency I'm gonna say um, and this is now the way that I want you to look at the charts instead of necessarily looking at it from a Fibonacci perspective let's look at it from this perspective and this is more um, for the people who have an understanding of some of the smart money concepts that um, that, that we have spoken about in this channel in the previous videos as well this retracement back up this market didn't retrace back up to tap off that 88.6 level on Fibonacci, it retraced back up to fill in this imbalance. This market over here, the retracement wasn't to tap off the 61.8%. It was to again, fill in imbalances over here, mitigate institutional candles. This move down plus these retracements over here were not just to tap off this 71% of Fibonacci, was to yet again, oops, I don't mean to do that, bit anticlimactic there. <laughs> was to fill in this imbalance, move down, retracement, and this retracement again, to fill in imbalances, to mitigate institutional candles, move, retracement, fill in certain imbalances. All of these moves are, you know, retracing to either fill in imbalances or mitigate certain institutional candles. Mitigating institutional candles, filling in imbalances even over here, mitigating institutional candles. Now, this is the way I currently look at Fibonacci. Fibonacci is not telling me anything more than the market itself would. So, it doesn't necessarily help my analysis. So, knowing this, or having seen this now, this makes me realize, okay, I don't necessarily want to use Fibonacci always as a very strong confirmation. We can always be using it as a minor confirmation. So you have everything else lining up and um, you're ready. Your positions are kind of ready as well. And if it's in your desired pocket of Fibonacci, then even better. That's a further confirmation. But in my personal opinion, even right now, I don't necessarily need a further confirmation from Fibonacci to tell me what the market is already telling me. Now, a lot of people who might not be trading smart money concepts or Wyckoff, this might not really make sense as I'm talking about imbalances and institutional candles. Um, but the bottom line is it would still apply to different strategies as well. Whether you want to use Fibonacci alongside of indicators or you want to use Fibonacci alongside of reversal zones, divergence, um, you know, trend lines and so on and so forth. So in my personal opinion, it's if, if, you, if you can read the market itself, then there's not much need for Fibonacci because you're getting more than enough information from the market, more than enough information from the candlesticks, from the imbalances, from the institutional candles, for you to not necessarily need to use Fibonacci for your entries. Now again, this is my current view on Fibonacci. It doesn't mean you should be duplicating this. In no way it means you should be duplicating this. But what I am trying to say is over the past about um, two and a half, three years that I've been trading now, I, I've started to realize that I can see the information before I need to even draw a Fibonacci. I'll tell you where I normally do use a Fibonacci though. Let's say we were here in the market. Clearly a bearish trend. Go ahead and I'll put a Fibonacci, let's say from that high to this low. This market came back up to well over 88.6, towards 100%. These will be the times that I would be very, you know, careful of retracements. The reason behind that is because the market has practically created a double top formation. There's a lot of liquidity resting above that level. There's a lot of stop losses resting above. So I can assume that this market can, you know, go through that eventually to take these stops later on. Again, from a manipulation perspective, how many people do you think were manipulated at that level over there? Resistance, resistance, oops, all the stop hunts, all the stop losses got hunted, let's say, and um, that's it. So these are very kind of, you know, rare scenarios that I would use Fibonacci, but even in, the, in this specific case, you don't need Fibonacci to tell you that there's a double top over there. You don't need Fibonacci to tell you that there's liquidity above there. So that's my personal understanding and my personal view on Fibonacci. Now, as I said, if you have a strategy that works for you in regards to Fibonacci, continue to use it. But if you have been trading, I'm not going to say for a few days, a few weeks, okay? If you've been using the strategy inconsistently, then don't worry about what I'm about to say. But if you've been using certain way of trading, let's say for months and for a long time, you've been trying to find entries based on Fibonacci and you're unsuccessful doing so, 
then put Fibonacci out of your mind for a short period of time and try and see what the market is actually telling you. What are the candlesticks telling you more than anything else? And I'm not talking about candlestick patterns such as bearish or bullish engulfing or hammer formations or shooting stars or whatever it may be. I'm just talking about, well, fr from our school of thought, it will be imbalances, institutional candles and general market structure. This may help you with better understanding market behavior rather than a tool that as helpful as it could be, all it does is telling you that the market is either at a very discounted level or a premium level. Now, I do apologize if this video is making people unsure in regards to Fibonacci or if it's, it might be hurting some feelings of people who very, very much love to use Fibonacci. I, I have always, well, used to at least, always use Fibonacci. As I mentioned, 61.8 and 71%. That was my, my desired level for me to go ahead and enter based on. And uh, it was working extremely well for a very, very long period of time. Um, but it does get to get, get to the point that you want to take that knowledge to the next level. You want to be able to see the market so you don't need indicators or Fibonacci or anything else tell you what's going to happen. You get more and more and more advanced when it comes to this analysis. And that comes with a lot of chart time, with a lot of practice, and maybe here and there taking some indicators or technical indicators off your charts. Well, with that being said, I hope you gained some value from this video. Do make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new. Uh, it would be great to have you guys on board. We are going to be releasing a lot more videos as I have mentioned in the previous videos as well. Um, and let me know down in the comment section below what other topics you would want me to speak about or if you have any questions. But with that being said, let's elevate, let's catch some pips and I'll catch you guys next week.